Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. I grew up in the FLDS community, which is run by Warren Jeffs, and I moved out of that community when I was 18 years old. But today we have a special treat. Today we have Amanda Ray on our channel. You may have seen her from her channel. It's just Amanda Ray, but I've also oh, yes. been on Escaping Polygamy as well. I did not grow up in the FLDS, but I came from a different polygamous cult known as the Order or the Kingston Clan. Yes. So we're super exci excited to do a collaboration with her. I know a lot of you have asked for this and we're finally yes. getting to it and doing this. So we're super <laughs> excited. I feel like every single polygamous um, cult has that. If, every time there's a new prophet, there's going to be people who disagree and yep. will branch off. And I think that's going to happen in my group too as soon as a new one is... Do you is... think it... But, but your group seems a lot more organized in the sense that, hey, these are the brothers. When this brother dies, probably the next oldest would immediately be in charge, well, no? It's kind of a crazy history. I kind of want to do a video on this because it's so okay. long. Yeah, we'll but but I, can, I can tell you a little bit of like what had happened last time. So when the leader before this one, Paul Kingston's leader now, his dad, or Tell was the leader, my grandpa. Okay. It was said that his brother was supposed to be the leader. The okay. next one, right? Like we were saying. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when he died, his first wife, and it wasn't his first wife, but she acted like the first wife, <laughs> wanted her son to have all the power. So oh, she boy. just said, well, he said that my son is now the leader, which is why Paul is the leader. But the brother was so upset because he was supposed to be but for some reason everyone went along with the son being the leader wow. and so the brother's mm -hmm. still there well he had passed away because he was older but like there was actually like kind of a split in the group they, they were still part of the group but like would follow the brother but wow. they would, were like ostracized for following the brother and not for following paul they're still there but like they wouldn't get to marry and it was super weird like a cut off within the cult how, because, how old was paul at this time was Paul, he kind of fourth into it as a young age? He at was a young really age? young, and he's not even the oldest of the kids. What I had heard, huh. this is all secret. Like they don't tell us this stuff. They they yeah. obviously said that God chose him, right? Yeah. Right. But what I had heard, being in the group and when I had left, was that Paul actually was trying to leave, and he was like in love with an LDS girl. Really? But oh. they thought that if they offered him the cults, right? Then he would yeah. Stay. Stay. And he did. He he. Someone had told me he was like engaged and gonna run away with her. But then when they offered him all of these things, then he stayed and like never saw her again. I don't know how wow. true it is, but it sounds very true. Shows you the determination of a mother to keep her son there. Mm -hmm. and, and like there's so much she has at stake, right? Because like she can lose everything. Right. And like her standing in the church is like you're frowned upon when you have a lot of your family leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's how it is in the FLDS. If you have one, yeah. mem one member of your family leaves, then all of a sudden there's a lot of bad stuff said about the family. Right? It was it was the case earlier on, but uh, in the years of my growing up, there were so many people leaving, leaving. at that point. Oh, okay. That it just was like okay it's just a thing that's happening okay. everybody basically yeah but early people. in the church the flds church it definitely was frowned upon if okay. you had someone leave yeah okay. well and they had yeah. so many people kicked out too oh that's they true. were kicking out so many people right. in so many families that yeah. it's like having... hard to keep track <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right exactly. yeah. okay yeah ours is still like if if members leave then like like with my mom when her three oldest girls had left she had nothing to like offer the order mm. at the time so she had lost her she had a really good job within the group. They demoted her to like janitor position, took her from her house and put her back into her old house because she like had nothing for them. She was working minimum wage within like the same year and then put into her old house. Wow. And then of course the, my, my brothers were like treated worse because of it. And it's, so it's like sad because it's like, that's kind of how I get feeling really guilty for my mm -hmm. choices that I chose for my own life. Mm -hmm. But it's also how they keep other people from like, hey, don't do that, or, right. or you're gonna or end up like gonna, so you're gonna have a miserable mm -hmm. life if you do that. Yeah. Has your mother left? No. So on the show, she did leave, and she she's like struggled back and forth her whole life because she was not born in it. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. married. Her sister kind of convinced her to marry her husband when she was very young. They said that like God is gonna, you're probably gonna die if you don't. Like it's very right. manipulative. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. she ended up like marrying and like kind of like being very unhappy with the mm -hmm. situation, but. She left and then felt very guilty for leaving, feeling like she's bringing her kids to hell with her. So then she went back. Big. It's, I feel like it's leaving and going back is still better than like never leaving because you get to experience a little bit. A little bit. bit. You at least know some of the... I think sometimes I think now, man, if I had gone back after knowing what I know now, I would have just gone back and been this different person and convinced people to live differently. But... It just doesn't work that I've way. I've had that same thought. I was like, maybe I could go back. But no, even when I was there, I was I felt like I was going crazy because everyone was acting like my thoughts, which were valid. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like women should have rights. I feel like we should not be racist. I, I felt like I was crazy for saying these things because everyone would look at me like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. So I think even now being out for almost eight, 
I've been out eight years. If I were to go back and try to do that, like convince people, I probably would go a little bit crazy being in that being in, in that, that environment again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, once you're out, especially as long as we've been out now, once you're out that long, going back, first of all, it just doesn't sound appealing at all. No. <laughs> the only thing I would I would like is to be able to spend time with my family. Exactly. But but of course, you know, I my my family that's still out there, they're super into the church still and still follow Warren Jeff so it, it's never going to happen unless they choose to move out yeah wait how much of your family is out and how much is in about uh, there's more in there's yeah. uh out of the siblings it's almost a half it's though. almost half so there's a few more in but the but the the mothers and father they're still out there oh this is like my main question that I have for you so how wait how many kids did your mom have 12. There's 12 of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, but biological, by your mom is 12, but how much total with your entire 35. Family? Okay. How many wives? Four. Uh, well, three. I, I'm, I'm counting the ones that are biological to me. Um, okay. So, so my, my father was married to three wives before I was born. Oh, wow. And so, so I'm one of the younger. Okay. Um, my, my mother is the second wife. Mm -hmm. and, Mine too. <laughs> oh, nice. And uh, I'm about middle of her children. I'm right in the middle of her 12 children. Okay. And Interesting. So the my father's third wife has or has children with her that are much older than me. Okay. Um, and then there was a fourth wife that came in way later. We were. She already had all of her children. Her husband had passed away. She was the so she was okay. assigned to my father almost in a way of like taking care of her or being okay. a part of a family. But she, obviously he never had any children with her. And so if I include all of her children, then it's about 40. Okay, yeah. But they're not actually biological. Right, right. But from right. his father is 35. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. about with my dad. He has three wives. Sisters too. First one's my oh, mom's sister, and then okay. there's my mom, and then his third wife is his half sister. Oh wow! Um, but uh, just over thirty siblings. I don't know exactly how many because I haven't seen the third wife since I left. But mm -hmm. she's the one still having kids. Oh, she's still okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, first we, wife, yeah, fifteen kids, ten kids, and then I don't know how many. Your mom had twelve though. Did yes. she have the most of them? All? No, uh, mm -hmm. two of them had twelve, and one had eleven. Wow. Is my math right then? Thirty five. Yeah. Yeah, thirty five. Yeah, you're good. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So um, what happened to women um like widows? Like in the case in the FLDS, they normally get remarried. Do the women, if their husbands well, I know they don't really get sent away the same way, but like do widows get remarried into other families? I'm or trying to, kind of okay, yeah. So Priscilla actually is a good example. Priscilla, the one that left and came to Las Vegas. Her dad had died when when they had just got married. Like mm. she, they had like two kids, and then he like was on a road trip and he had passed away. So she was single for a while. They're trying to figure out. It's very rare, but um, she, they did assign not assign like have direction that she should marry another man because she was still having kids. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when the woman has been past like having children age, they don't really bother getting her married again because they right. just really want them to procreate. Gotcha. So what's the point? You does know? the church right. take Does the church take care of those women still, or are they just kind of on their own? Like you're useless, you're useless to us now. Yeah, it's it's really sad that the order definitely like kind of uses you up until they can't use you anymore. Yeah. So and just like this too, like I have noticed in the FLDS community from a lot of the members that I've talked to, they actually the men do take care of the women a lot more than what I came from. Like my dad didn't really pay any of the bills my mom was working on my entire life like all really of them. i know some women that were expected to pay their men their husbands college education these women are younger than them and they are taking care of their children having full-time jobs also being wow. expected to pay rents and pay for the man's schooling so mothers and like having stay-at-home moms was not a priority no my mom is like one of the only ones that I really knew of that was like stay at home in the beginning because she did not want her kids to be babysat because mm -hmm. if you think of it, other other groups, like other women in the group babysitting 20 kids mm -hmm. is not going to be effective. They're not going to be watching them. And she knew that. So she said she wanted to be a stay at home and she would just be babysitting herself. So she wow. did stay at home, but she had to be making money. So she was babysitting and making like not very much, but like there's not like any stay-at-home moms that just stay at home and don't have a form of income. Wow, mm -hmm. oh, that's way different than that the is, LDS that is and the FLDS. completely different. For, in, in, from the FLDS, it almost seemed like they didn't want the women to have any control of anything. Uh -huh. Like they wanted, to, they wanted to be the ones making the money, they wanted to be the ones providing, they, so that, that way the women would depend on them. 
Oh, okay. Well, the women still depended. Like, my mom, one of her main things was like, I can't leave because I can't support myself. I'm like, what do you, what do you think You've you're doing right now? You've been supporting yourself. They make you pay rent right now. Yeah. But it's really just they want as much money as possible. And who are they paying rent to? To the leaders. Mm-hmm. The money, it, as much money as they can get. And right. then they will just take. So. Yeah. I mean, there were women from the FLDS that did have good jobs. Uh, so it, it was a thing. But mm-hmm. it wasn't the it wasn't the norm. Right. By any it's means. not promoted. Right. See, and that's where the LDS had sh- has shifted because it used to be like a huge emphasis on women staying at home and mm-hmm. that that is your primary duty. Like even in the proclamation yep. family, like it is a it's woman's duty to, right. yeah, your number one priority is to be a mother and to stay at home and to raise those children. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's shifted a lot. So the church is like way more understanding and like women can work a lot more, but mm-hmm. it didn't, it wasn't always like that. It wasn't always like that. But now that. it's shifted to where they're way more accepting of Women working. Women working and stuff. But it's still, they always still kind of emphasize the importance of women staying home. Okay. So yeah. a lot of the moms were staying home then. Oh, um, yeah. In the FLDS? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what I had a question. And I had a lot of people asking the same question. Because in the Kingstons, we, each mom lived in separate homes. Oh. You guys was, did not. Nope. They're all in the same house. Yep. Was there a lot of like... Fighting? Well, <laughs> there, there, there was most of it. Most of the disagreements, I guess you should say. I never saw a pulling of hair or. Okay. That kind of, <laughs> I, I feel like they just. Yeah, I want to hear Jesus say that. There, it may have happened in some homes. I feel like in my house, though, the women did a pretty good job of hiding their dis- oh, yeah. disapprovements and all that. But most of the time, when they disapproved, it was because one mother was telling their children one thing. And, and, and then they would tell the other mother's children the same thing when that mother thought that it should be a different way. Right. So it was always between the way they were teaching their children. Mm-hmm. It, okay. for, for me, at least, is what it seemed like. Because the kids had to, they had to treat all the mothers as their own. As they all had to call them mother and they had to listen to all of them, but they each listened a little bit more and had kind their of their own, own roles to their own mother. Right, because it's their biological mother. Right. Because their biological mother. So and we all knew who our mother was. Like, it wasn't yeah. like it just a scrambled up, you know, <laughs> mess. It's my mommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah where's my, or, are you my mother? Yeah, no. <laughs> so, uh, but no, they did a pretty good job, I would say, at least in my family of like, hey, these are my children. This is what I want for them. Okay. And then they just kind of focused on their own children in each. But his but, father made most of the rules. Right. So yeah. Everybody was mostly yeah. just following. Exactly. Yeah. My, I would say my mother was probably one of the most strict though. So we oh, were, wow. us children were oftentimes with her in her room as she was talking to us about don't do what the other kids are doing here and do this. And like, it was very, she seemed to have a lot more rules than the other mothers oh, did. Oh, uh, so it's like you yeah. have a big family meeting and then she's like, okay, come in my room. We're going to have exactly. our family meeting. Exactly. <laughs> let me tell you how it really is going to work out here. <laughs> oh, wow. No, I feel like if my family all lived together, there would have been fist fights. There would have been, there was yeah. already fighting. Like we tried to do family trips with all of us together and, uh-huh. and it was terrible. Yeah. No one had a good time. Uh, it's like the wives are fighting. It's mostly the w- women fighting for attention from the husband. And yeah. I can see that happening. How did happening. that work? I didn't see that happening. So, like, how did that work, though, with being different households? Did, like, your father stay at your house a certain number of nights? Like, did he mm-hmm. just rotate? So, it would go kind of in order of the ones he married. He would go one day with the first wife, one day with my mom, one day with the third wife, and then rotate. But... Um, that sounds exhausting. Oh, yeah. So, he would have, like, a box of his stuff at my mom's house. Like, yeah. yeah. But, can't imagine um, being those women. I mean, I guess it's just as crazy in my situation. But just thinking now that from the outside, is like... I mean, as women, like, can you imagine your Not husband seeing, yeah. like going to different, knowing that he's going to these different houses to be with different women? Oh, yeah. yeah. I would ask my mom. I would be like, what, how do you cope with this? Because I, I can tell you're not happy when you're alone. Right. And, you're, and like, we would sleep in her bed with her when he was gone because mm-hmm. she would get lonely. But um, she would say that she would just have to pretend that he's on a business trip or something because knowing that he's going home with her sister was like it would break her heart every time oh i could Um, never Mm -hmm. oh my gosh and she was very open with us i know that they were they taught us not to be jealous and jealousy is ungodly and stuff but my mom would sit us down and be like don't ever be a second wife it is miserable (laughs) and at least she was honest and i feel like that's part of why i started to see things as they truly were Mm. right so were the first wives um treated better were they better than the other wives like did where, where she's saying, don't be the second wife. Was it I, better to be the first wife? Because Teffy said, his sister had said before in the FLDS that she was like, I just want to be the first wife. Mm-hmm. Well, that was definitely a thing in our group too. Yeah. Well, and sometimes the, the, the first wife, maybe you could say, had a little bit more 
power or a say in the matter. They were there longer. They were there right? longer. But I think that a lot of the women wanted to be first wives so they, they could have their time with the husband first. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before he was, was sharing with other women. Mm-hmm. But still, I don't think it would make it any easier like, to be with him for a, a long time. I can be myself and now I have to share him. At least if you're coming in as a second wife, you're just used no. to sharing right from the beginning. Exactly. Right. That's what was my thought process when I was starting to leave. When mm-hmm. I was going to leave, I would, like all my friends would be like, at least I'm a first, at least I'm a first. I was like, great. So he can fall in love with you. You can watch him fall in love with someone else. Yeah. Like that's even Enjoy harder. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like At least being the second out. wife, you would know what you were getting into from the right. beginning. Yeah. Exactly. Not that you had much of a choice though, right? I mean, exactly. No. At what age did you start realizing? This is a question I had for you too. Oh, okay. So, so right. I, for me, it was when my friends were starting to get married and when I was starting to get those hormones and like boys, right? Mm-hmm. And they would say, I actually, so I got to go to public school for like only two years because at the time they didn't have a private like junior high. Okay. okay. So a lot of them were doing homeschool. My mom was like, let them go to public school because she had gone to public school. So mm-hmm. it was like a rare occasion, but I started like liking an outside boy. So I had like questions, yeah, it was very bad, very frowned upon. So I was like, Dad, could I ever like bring, this is naive me, bring a outsider into the order? And he was like, women can't do that, no. The fact that you even went to your dad or your father about a question like that shows that you had a close relationship with him. At one point, yeah. I would have never dared say something about anything to my father really? or my mother about something like that just because I knew that I wasn't supposed to even be thinking those thoughts okay yeah yeah because it was all strictly organized and uh, and they were they would just tell us what we were supposed to do when the marriage yeah. came around I guess at that age I was very young and not even confused because when I got older obviously I knew that that was like never no one ever had done that uh-huh. so. but yeah I started to question at that point and then like when they wanted me to marry my cousin, I was like, no. Like at 14, I knew I was gonna be out because wow. it, I was either going to live the life that all of them were living, which looked very unhappy and miserable, or take my chances on the outside. So they were getting married at 14? Or what A lot of them were betrothed. Um, um, I did know some that would have like secret weddings at 15. You don't really get to see it. You only know if you're very close to them. Okay. But they would be like betrothed and then they would be married and you didn't know they were married. And okay. then they would have the legal wedding when they were 16, because that's legal in Utah. Interesting. So, sorry, okay. I have a question. I don't know if this is still recording because I heard it go off. Okay, it is. Good, okay. Yeah. Just making sure. No, you're yeah. good, yeah. Uh, um, Interesting. So, with you okay. guys, though, you wouldn't talk about stuff like that. You would just know this is what is expected of you. We weren't even supposed to look at girls, you yeah, know? Yeah, Mariana's saying, so you would have the boys in the front at church and the girls in the back as to not seek temptation or see temptation, right? So, you guys could She see must have them. lived in a stricter time period. Because when, when I was going to church, they, they took away, see, I don't know, what is she talking about recent church or? I think it's recent because I feel like Lauren, when I when he like okay. announced he was leaving, I saw that the men so were in the front too. This is when they started doing so it in the houses. Oh, I've been out for 12 years now. So. Okay. Oh, 13. You what, just had a some, I, oh my, I'm getting old. Okay. 13. So. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So anyway, uh, so when I was out there and we were actually having church uh, meetings in the church building. Mm-hmm. Not in the homes and like stuff like they do now, or that they were doing. Uh, it was just kind of, every family sat together. Okay. Every family sat together, and so the the men and the women were just kind of mixed in throughout the church. Yeah, uh, that's how building. it is in in the order. Yeah. Like the families stick together in their groups, and they all kind of sit in the same spot. So at certain ages, of course, as boys, we were sitting there like, hmm, I wonder who I will get one day. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But in your time, that was taken away because Warren went to prison in, while you were... When were you? So Warren went to prison just like, uh, I think a year and a half, two years before I moved out. So it wasn't a oh, long time. Okay. And the, the rules that he started giving people weren't quite as strict uh, when I was out there. Right. After right. I had moved out, he started throwing these things in there that were just way over the top. Just yeah. really crazy rules. Yeah, Marianne was saying he like took away um, pets, mm-hmm. toys. Mm-hmm. Yep. The word, the, the word, word fun. fun. The word fun was no longer allowed. What? It could be yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Everything, Let's not get crazy and have any fun. He didn't want anyone to have wow. a good time. It was all about you're just supposed to work, you know, build up the kingdom of God, as he would say, things like that. Wow. Yeah. So someone had told me too that like I was like, where did you put all your dogs and animals? And she, she some people were like, we let them go, and some people had to like put them down. Mm-hmm. Like, That's. I know friends that, that that put them down. Yeah. That's so. So the, the the pets thing happened when I was out there. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. And so Lauren wanted me to, because when I, I, t I asked a bunch of you guys if you wanted to, what questions you guys wanted, Lauren got on there, he was on the show, and he was like, you guys should discuss how you guys didn't, were not allowed to use like internet and, and phone. Okay. So um, were you allowed to use um, internet? So we could, but it was very monitored. And oh. like I did have a Facebook, but my dad like knew the password and he would like, he would see that I was following like Colleen who had left and Chanel who had left and he would like block them right. oh. and like look through my messages and stuff. And like, if you, if they didn't want you to have one, then you didn't have one okay. or you would have to like have one in secret. Right. I did not have a phone. I was not allowed to have one. I figured out how to get one though. And I became like almost like the phone dealer of the order when oh. I was like 15. Like I would give out <laughs> secret phones to all my Man, friends. You're a and, rebel like, out there. <laughs> I was considered very rebellious and like the, you know, ashamed to my family I guess but interesting he was so a you... rebel too I always tell him like I always wanted a bad boy you know listen yeah. to the like how you have Tim McGraw <laughs> I know I was so bad no so we were not allowed to have any internet uh, there were a couple uh, like offices or companies that had internet mm -hmm. but no one was supposed to have it in the house right so internet was not allowed TV wasn't allowed movies weren't allowed was this before Warren went to prison or after this was even before this was yeah, my, this was always. my whole life my whole life was okay, that way okay. yeah wow. we did have cell phones though but it was just the old-fashioned flip phones that you could only text or call or right, right. no internet on them okay they just to yeah. contact your yeah. family and okay. girlfriends that I wasn't supposed to have right yeah. that was me too <laughs> I no. oh sorry Go ahead. I, was gonna say, I had, went through so many because I had like so many people in that I had given their phones to uh -huh. All their numbers were in my phone, and when my dad had found out, I would like break it and flush it because I would have wow. their names, and they would be like all of them. Would you didn't want to get them in trouble. Yeah, so that just yeah, but yeah. So would, many fun stories, <laughs> right? Sneaking out. Did you ever ever sneak out of your house? Yeah, all okay. the time. Yeah. I, that became like the only way that I felt like I had my own freedom. Okay. Was I would sneak out. I actually like toilet paper was like I, I took that on with one of like the leader's kids. Uh -huh. We would just you would toilet knew, paper someone's house or something. <laughs> we knew all their addresses, so we would just toilet paper sometimes like fourteen houses in oh, one night. Oh man, That's, that was what, how we like had our fun. But yeah, don't do that now with the shortages, right? <laughs> no, I know. I know. If anything, it's a gift now, right? Yeah, exactly. Did you guys uh, live in close proximity? Like, were there certain neighborhoods that was? Or were you integrated with regular people? It was kind of like just into society, right? Oh, and like, okay. Because um, I know you guys had like your community was all FLDS members. Yep. Yeah. This is like maybe in Idaho because they do have like a farm in Idaho where they have like certain families all in one area where okay. the farm's at. But we have them like all over West Valley. A lot of the companies are on Redwood Road in West Valley. But it's okay. kind of just wherever they decide to buy the homes. My mom lived mm. in like West Jordan. I knew people in like Taylorsville. It's kind of like just They're very spread out. Oh wow. Do you ever would you ever get together as a complete community? All the time for like um, when the there would be like birthday for the leader who had died before, then we oh, okay. all get together at Fremont Park. Okay. I think I think that's what it's called, yeah. And then we would just like have like potlucks and stuff like that. And then the Christmas program. I don't think you guys celebrate Christmas. No. Mm -mm. Christmas. No holidays. No holidays. Actually, when I was younger, we did celebrate the fourth of July. And the twenty okay, fourth yeah. of July. Very patriotic. Yes. FLDS are very like Republican. Yes. D same with uh, the order members. Right. Very Republican. But yeah, we would do like get togethers, like big meets. It's usually like um, the just the Kingstons. Mm -hmm. But when it was Christmas, then everyone would go. It was like this. It's this big warehouse in West Valley. That's where the church would happen, and that's where like the receptions would happen. That's where like. Christmas stuff would happen. Someone would dress up as Santa Claus and give Aww. out like oranges and stuff. It was kind of cute. I do miss some things about the community. Like we were on a baseball team. I was pretty good at baseball and we'd go like every Monday. Oh wow. And like the whole field, they would rent it for just like the order members. Okay. But we did somewhat normal things and like they kind of did, I feel like, I don't know if you've heard the term of like the Kingston's are known as like the mafia of polygamists because they were pretty good at, the leadership was good at like he had a lot of lawyers that worked mm -hmm. for him that were in the group. He had, he like sent people to school to like basically so that he oh, could be okay. untouchable. I was gonna say it makes yeah. it seem more like yours was to make you feel like you were getting to be normal while you're being manipulated and not being able to actually be normal. Right. But I also feel like a lot of them kind of wanted to be even the men. Mm -hmm. Like the men loved baseball. And so well, they were like, let's start a baseball team. And so uh, that's why it started. And then the women were like, we want to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so well, does, it, does it seem like the man had a good time out? Like, were they happy? That's why I, I think like Lauren too wanted to talk about education. Mm -hmm. The men were very like pushed to do education because really? it, would, it would help the leadership. Like, right. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we need a doctor who is going to go to school for X amount of years to be a doctor. They weren't mm -hmm. going to fund it, but they would support it. Yep. Women, not so much because 
education means freedom. For exactly. us, right? Yeah. And, and the, power. So, yeah. so yeah. So your question, did the men enjoy it? I feel like they trusted the men more because the men don't really have as big of a reason to leave. Like mm-hmm. women, we have like no rights. Right. And then if you have no education, you don't know like what's going to happen in the real world. You're too well, and you can't leave. leave. Yeah. I've right. seen that a lot with women that have left or even men that have left the FLDS because out there, you know, when you leave, you're just like, whoa, I don't have an education because a lot of the men didn't have educations out there. Right. This all kind of started happening when the Jeffs took over, though. So okay. before the Jeffs, a lot of the men were getting educations. Okay. Yeah. So they would at least get a high school diploma. A high school and even some of them on to college. You go to college. Oh, wow. And they okay. kind of would do more of the like, oh, okay, you're going to... Like, they would go out knowing that that was going to be a dentist that comes back to the community oh, wow. or things like that. But wow. that really kind of... I think the Jeffs just made more money off of them being so good at construction. Yeah. That's what, I was That's what it came down to. So a lot he would money. rip the boys out of school and, and just have them do construction. They didn't have to do something. Yeah. yeah. A, a lot of... I mean, <laughs> homeschooling was a thing. Oh, okay. Homeschooling was a thing, but... Really, yeah. once you got to a certain age that you were old enough to work out on a construction site, which was not legally working age, but like right. you were able to yeah. work, then, uh, yeah, you would go out and you'd start working, and uh, a lot of the families would ask that you basically turn your money in. Okay, yeah, that, that was another question of mine. But, yeah, so when I met Lauren, I think he only had, like, a third grade education. Mm-hmm. It was very same. common. I had met, like, Willie Steed, too, same thing, never. Mm-hmm. He didn't even know how to read. Wow. I was like, that, this is so hard for someone to come from a community like that and to be thrown into this world and then you can't even read and do like normal things yeah you feel you you feel completely i mean it's a harsh word but you almost feel worthless speaking from my own experience you know it's like okay i I can't do anything you know you have skills in other areas that i'm sure no one else had and that's and that's what we ended up using is our construction skills we we, that's how we survived financially when we first Mm -hmm. moved out it's just we went to work. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know a lot of FLDS people that actually have companies now that are in construction because yep. they were so Huge. good at it. Oh yeah. Yep. So which that's, that's so a that's thing. true. I mean, we didn't. We were we were very good. But me personally, I don't feel like I was super good at anything in construction. I kind of I did a little bit of everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I had a little bit of experience with everything in construction, but I didn't feel like I could go start my own company. Oh, okay. You but know? he can make all my Pinterest dreams come I, true. I can do that. So kind of that's, that's more super than a lot nice. of guys <laughs> no, A lot of guys are kind of like useless in that area nowadays. Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. But now, I mean, I've come a long way and I feel like I could conquer anything almost. But I mean, I was very fortunate to have a lot of good experiences that gave me that self confidence over time. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I had a question and I was like trying to remember what it was. But oh, no worries. It's not written down. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through all of these now. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, we can always do a part two. I know this is a lot of good stuff, and yeah, we have more questions for you too. So, for sure, mm-hmm. um, the education thing is a very big. You guys never got to go to public school ever. Um, so gotcha. me no, me no, and and everyone my age never did. Okay, okay. Because you know, there there came a point during the Jeff's reign <laughs> that yeah. that they just started shutting down all of the education, all of the public stuff. Okay. No public libraries either. They okay. shut down the libraries. Because you, I heard you're not supposed to be reading books too, unless it was like okayed by the. Public. Exactly. That was so. When I was really little, we actually had a neighborhood library that we would go to, and I would go to, and I'd read about Clifford or you know oh, the, yeah. the, the the other books and things. And I I love doing that. I love to read. I kind of taught myself to read in the beginnings, uh-huh. and then I would just go to my mother and say, "Hey, what's this word?" And I remember one of the most difficult words I had trying to learn was captain. I was reading about a captain of a ship in a book. And I was like, I couldn't figure out how to say it. So I went to her and I said, how do you say it anyway? So I learned words and then I just loved to learn and read that way. But as I got a little bit older and Warren Jeffs became, in, you know, started having more power, he made them destroy the library. Wow. And I assume it's so that people couldn't get more education so that he could be in control. More right. power control. Mm-hmm. That's what no, it seems like. No free thoughts of any kind. And they don't need an education to be able to make good money in construction and give him more money. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to... That's the question. So we were talking about um, the money in the banks. Mm-hmm. So did you guys have a bank or did all... You just didn't have any money. You just... All of it was So yours. that's a great question and we did have banks. Okay. You know, we would use banks in the nearby community or the nearby city, St. George, Utah. Okay. And so a public bank. Public banks. Okay. And, and that way we could cash checks and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the men even had debit cards and some even had credit cards. So okay. we were allowed to do that, and there was a community bank at one point. I was too young to ever use it or really know what they were doing, but I believe they offered like loans and things like that. But 
I, d- I never used the bank, so I can't speak for other people. Okay. So did you get checks from your work or was yes. it you were working for free? Oh, really? No, we would get checks and then we would go cash the check and then we would turn in uh, a certain amount and keep what we were allowed to keep. Okay, yeah. So with yeah. us, it was like um, 10% is supposed to go to the church, but we would sign this thing that was like that inventory form, which was like basically all of your incomings and outgoings in the name of the Lord. Mm. Everything you own is gods right meaning no one had their names on their houses your car mm-hmm. could also be they could have the title of your car if they wanted it mm-hmm. when i was working for them i would just like not get paid and i would look at my like statement because they their bank the bank was their bank wow. so you would go look at the paper that they print and that's the amount of money they say you have and so i would be working for months and my account balance would say the same and sometimes go negative and i'd be like, like hmm, <laughs> someone's wow. taking all your money mm-hmm. the lds it's 10 percent yeah i but think that's there's no consecration in like the book of mormon i think yeah, well, I mean, tithing is even the in the Bible. It might be the Bible. Yeah, the Bible is, yeah. is 10%. Oh, right. So that's where it was. But you have to voluntarily, like, give that money. Right. It's, it's not never like taken. Like There's no bank or anything. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to tithing, so we were, in the FLDS, we were required to turn in a lot of our money to our own family. Like, turn it into father. Oh. That helped pay for the house. To help pay for the, oh, okay. the, the family stuff. But the tithing situation was very different. They would almost, it was like, they would almost have like callings where they was where they would stand up in church and say, every man above a certain age needs to give us a certain amount of money. Really? Like thousands of dollars at a time. Yeah. So then they would just have these, this chunk of money, you know, and then they would do whatever they thought. Do you ever wonder what those real reasons were for the money? <laughs> Back then. You had to buy a condo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back then, I assumed it was for, it. you know, to build up the community and do all these good things. And maybe years ago, maybe it was for good things. Mm-hmm. But I know that, you know, the, the, the leaders of the church had a, a Lear private jet, jet, a private jet, and they had... They had a private jet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they to were, go back and forth to Texas and to go to northern Utah and stuff from yeah. the community. I wonder if mine probably does that we just don't know about. Maybe, yeah. So I know they would have a lot of nice things, but who knows what they spent all the money on because it was thousands and thousands oh, of dollars. I'm yeah. sure because you guys had a lot, a big population. One of the questions that one of the my followers asked today was, how big is your guys' population? So it reached the point of 10,000. Okay, yeah. But right now, yeah. I have not the slightest idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're so scattered leaving. and people have leave, left. I mean, probably a couple thousand. Oh, wow. Really? Well, and they haven't had babies now for right. a while. Right. Dang. So it's probably just going to And there's no marriages. So no marriages, mm-hmm. no babies. And it's and because like of no going marriages, out and getting converts. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because of no marriages and it's kind of a natural instinct for men and women wanting to be together, um, you know, from out there. So it's a lot of men and women are leaving now because they're not allowing them to be married. Right. That was something too that I was going to ask. So they were saying that the, the man and the woman can't stay in the same household. Right. right? Even if they're married. You know, now. Yep. Um, that, that's a, that's a recent rule, but yes. Someone asked this question today. What happens or has this ever happened if the wife gets pregnant by her husband? If the wife is pregnant by her husband, right now more than likely, <laughs> more than likely he would get kicked out and she would stay. Really? So, oh, okay, then this is also something. I or they would both be kick, get kicked out together. Right, but yeah. most likely they want to keep the women. Mm-hmm. Right, that's kind of how my group is too. The women are yeah. very valuable. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, oh, so someone was saying that they had directed some men to like impregnate the women. Is that true or false? Um, it's actually true. Oh, We've heard the same so thing. So it, it makes me it makes me angry to even think about it. Yeah. But uh, supposedly. Um, there were assigned men out there, and they were the only ones that were allowed to, but they would be the sea bearers, is what they were called. And then it was like God would choose specific women that needed to yep. like bear their children. Yep. Is that still happening? I don't think so. I don't think... I don't but know it could how they be, could it could, it, it could be in secret that I don't yeah. know about, but I know there are some families out there that aren't even sure who their father is because of this. Wow. Like some children don't know who their father is because... It was just one of these sea bearers. This yeah. makes me mad. Oh my! Yeah, anyway, it is upsetting for sure. To, to even think about it. But um, anyway, so yeah, there were. I don't know how many men there were, but there were several that were allowed to go and impregnate the women, and, and that way the, mm-hmm. the community would continue to grow. Right. But as far as I'm aware, right now that's not happening. Okay. Yeah, and this is something that Warren had like preached about when he was in prison. Yeah, exactly. it was something. Yeah, it was one something of the crazy he, things that yeah. Warren did. And yeah. but now that everybody's so spread too, I don't even know if that would. I mean, it might still be happening, but right. not that we're... It's hard to know. I mean, I don't, I'm not really... 
in the know when it comes to the followers of Warren Jeffs anymore. So who knows what's right, <laughs> going right. on. It's, it's interesting though to know, but um, I did have this question. I did, we talked about how you, how you left kind, mm-hmm. of, kind of in the beginning of this, but yeah. do you have like a first memory of you like questioning the leadership? <laughs> You're like, I know this one. <laughs> yeah. That is such well, a good question. Do yeah. You, 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 you well, ahead. I'm sorry. I have to smirk a little bit because along with his story of him leaving, what's interesting is he didn't really leave because he was questioning. No. Which is kind of the opposite of most people's stories. Right. Most people question and, and then they, they think I'm going to leave. His was so, so spontaneous a, that it didn't happen because of questioning. It's a unique, yeah, definitely unique. It was more of a, hey, I want to I want to live a different lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. And and so my idea was it was a great plan, right? I'm, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave out. I, I'm gonna move out. I just decided 15 minutes ago I'm gonna leave, and I have 20 dollars, so this is good. Uh, anyway, so I left the community, and my idea was, you know what? I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna experience the real world, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. And then when I've experienced and I realize that what I've been taught my whole life is true, because of course it is. This is what I was telling mm-hmm. myself. I'm gonna go back. So that way I can return to heaven. So when I left, I expected one day I'd go back. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's probably great though because then you you can cope better. Like a lot of order people, especially women that I know that have left, like knew in their brains that they were going to hell. Mm-hmm. So you were like, I'm going to experience the world, realize that everything I've been taught is true, and I'll go back. But then exactly. you come out and you're like, Like, wait what? a minute. <laughs> None of that yeah. was, no. And I feel like that's actually <laughs> not as uncommon for FLDS because he also had like a brother that left. He wanted to be able to get married. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And so I him and believed. his secret girlfriend, and they believed and like still had, Warren Jeffs was like the background for their phone and everything. When they left, they came to stay with us. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where people have to slowly learn for themselves. You know, we weren't yeah. going to say anything, but... Mm-hmm. It, it, a lot of people aren't leaving because they're questioning the leadership. It's not, I don't think Warren just is a prophet. I don't think that the church is true. That's not their reasoning. It's the thing, the crazy things that Warren's trying to do. Like, oh, I can't get married. I can't yeah. have kids. I mean, girls, that's, that's, that's a huge thing. That's their whole, well, and when they're ta- yeah, they're their taught whole life. life. That's what they're taught. Is that's, that's the only reason or the main reason that they're on earth. And so, so they feel those urges of, okay, well, I want to get married. I want to start a family. Mm-hmm. I have to leave to do that. But in their heads, they're still like full believing. That's yeah. crazy. That, yeah, that was something that was such a shock to me, um, helping people from the FLDS leave on the show. Mm-hmm. Because like most of the order girls that I knew, like did not believe, either didn't believe or believed they were going to hell and like accepted that. Yeah. They weren't going to like continue like believing in Paul or whatever. Because they were, they, you can't like, you know. But with FLDS, they would like take the picture of the prophet with them, uh-huh. or like, um, like maybe this them... will save me in the last day. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's their thought process, right? <laughs> and then because you can't really go back now when you're FLDS and you're like announcing that you left, you they, can't come no, back. They wouldn't. They wouldn't let me in there. They'd be suspicious. Especially, I've heard. I've heard rumors that some of people from out there are seeing some of these videos I'm putting up, and mm-hmm. at this point, oh man, I'm I'm the you're, worst you're of the worst. Definitely. <laughs> me too. So when I went on the show, then well, first of all, when I left they were really rude like they were very um people that i thought were my best friends like overnight Mm. super rude to me oh yeah but then when i went on the show even worse because it's like one thing to leave and it's another thing to um talk about their secrets to to actually be okay Mm -hmm. with it and Mm -hmm. and talk me up right so well and of course the leaders of the church were probably talking smack about you because because oh this is what happens when you leave look how evil she is now right she's so unhappy you know i mean of course same stuff about you oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah my, my siblings probably think I'm the most miserable person in the world based off of what my parents have told them. Oh, yeah. Because they don't want them to trust your word. So exactly. they have to taint your reputation. Mm-hmm. That's what I noticed. Like overnight, my reputation was like down the drain. Yeah. So that they would not think that Amanda is a viable source. Mm. Which, um, this is interesting. My I have a half brother actually who recently left. And he was so scared to meet with my other siblings that were out. Mm-hmm. Because he had been told, like he was expecting them to be like drug addicts. Oh, yeah. And he met them being so timid, and by the end of it, they, like he met my brother who was LDS, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Man, I was really scared to meet you guys. I really thought you guys had like addictions and were like alcoholics and were miserable." And he was like, "Esco's like never drank in his life." And he was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they will just try to taint that, and that's kind of what they did to us with outsiders, mm-hmm. so you wouldn't trust them. Exactly. And it works. Yeah, but, it works, and it's a it's a great way to manipulate someone mm-hmm. because if you tell this person, "Hey," See, this is what happens. This is why you don't leave because this person left and now they're all, like you said, either drug addicts or mm-hmm. or they're just super unhappy. I, I assumed that I would come out and find out how unhappy it was to live out here right. and that I would go back. Mm-hmm. 
And then I came out and I was like, oh, wait, this is a much better lifestyle. Yeah, I don't want to go back, but I need <laughs> oh, more than $20. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, but, um, man. Yeah. That's kind of why I've continued with my videos and stuff, though, is because um, some of them do watch. And they, yeah. it's their only form of really knowing what it is like. Because mm -hmm. they're too scared to like talk to me or reach out. Some of them will reach out and be like, my husband found out. I can't talk to you anymore. Yeah. But they can get on their phones like in secret and like see mm -hmm. what's going on or like what the real world is has been like for me. Yeah. And for me... I didn't have that. I did mm -hmm. have like I would follow follow like people's Facebooks that I right. like. Are they doing okay? Like, yeah. Are they on drugs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think this is good for even for like FLDS members that who are thinking about it. They probably right. stumble across your channel. I've actually had I'm not gonna name names to, mm -hmm. to not get them in trouble, but I've had people reach out to me and uh, in some cases even pretend that they accidentally called me. And like really? oh who oh well now they got you on the phone how you doing you know and because they don't want to be they have the sin right exactly <laughs> so yeah. if they accidentally call me then they're they're good and then right. anyway we talk and then they have questions and so hopefully it's doing some good and yeah, people are watching so. yeah I think so for sure and even like, you might you may not know how many people it's affecting because right because just like that like talking to the one outsiders that you talk to it ultimately helped you to leave right, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. this can be a big change and i have noticed a lot of younger people are leaving mm -hmm. from my group and i think it's because they're they are on social media right. and they're looking at what's happening in the world yeah. so and it's nice that there's people like you and i that are out here they know they can reach out to uh, because a lot of people back when i left we didn't know where to turn where to go luckily i had a really amazing family that took me in but in a lot of cases, when someone leaves, they don't know what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, people and people have more siblings out here now, and they see people like us that are talking about it, and hopefully they'll feel comfortable to reach out to us. Right, definitely. What did leaving look like for you? Like, did you have to, like, physically leave? Like, were you living with your family, or How was it just like, I'm did no you have to jump? Yeah, to, or, or, to or were you just like, oh, I'm no longer, <laughs> I'm no longer gonna go to church, or was no, it like, what did I, that look like? I could not just announce I'm not going to church and still be allowed to live at home, okay. no. Okay. Um, I had run away multiple times, and, but because I, I was a minor, and like, Utah laws are kind of weird for minors, they would mm. send me back home, the cops would be like, hey, you have to be here, I would be like, listen, you don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I eventually, I talked about it on my channel about how the day I left it was like a long thing but I had known that I was gonna leave for years and okay. I tried multiple times but um, long story short I had basically um, packed I had my stuff packed and ready to go for that day and I told my dad I will not be here I will not be here by the time I'm 18 and he had tried to get me married he tried mm -hmm. to get me to go into meetings with the leader and I was just like there's only so much I could do as a minor <laughs> but eventually <laughs> The day I left was this huge, there was this huge thing where I had gotten attacked by the leader's brother and I called the police. Oh, wow. It's a long story. If you guys want to like, if yeah. you want to watch it, the it's link on my, in the description. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. on my channel. It's like my longest video I have, but like it's, it's cause I kind of felt like making the video cause like overnight they were telling lies about me. Like he had never attacked me. Like they have footage that I was making it up or like I clawed myself cause I was bleeding. Oh, it was wow. pretty bad. It was a pretty big deal. I called the police and I had already wanted to leave at this point. The one cop was on my side and he was like, you need to just leave, take this as your silver line and get out. Mm -hmm. Another cop pulls up like 30 minutes later, has me get in his car and like tries to convince me not to press charges on the leader's brother. He was obviously working for me. I was going to say, yeah. he must have been yeah. connected. Yeah. Okay. So all of this is just confirming that I need to leave. And then um, how I was treated after that too. Like basically mm -hmm. because I called the cops and because I was fighting the leadership, I no one wanted me to be there yeah. anymore like and i had already announced that i wanted to leave but my dad was keep, keeping trying to keep me there mm. but i think i caused so much of a stir that they were like just let her go just let her go yeah. and it was like making them look bad that mm. i was still in their house right so and even my dad was like if you want to be a part of the order then you need to call and um apologize right. to the man who had abused you and i was like well i don't even want to be here yeah. <laughs> and i'm not gonna apologize yeah so that that's when I finally was able, that's how I was able to leave before 18 too. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I would have had to wait another month, right? But I was out and I, I had left. I, I remember like putting my stuff in some like, it was in West Jordan when the houses were being built and mm -hmm. I like put, brought all my stuff to this random house that was being built. My mom and then my brothers and sisters were like watching and my little brother Esco was like trying to like help me move my stuff. My mom like held him back and was like, no, wow. don't help her. <laughs> So. See, that must have been so tough um, because, I mean, you were dealing with all that. For me, it was more of a, I just didn't go home. Mm -hmm. So, never went back. so it was, so I had that, I had that assurance of my family really wanted me and loved me. It was just that I chose to live a different lifestyle. But, but I mean, I imagine it was so emotionally 
oh. difficult because you knew that at that point your family was turning on you mm-hmm. uh, in a way. And, and they thought I, they thought that I was turning on them. I feel like they'd kind of do that maybe in the FLS mm-hmm. too. Like mm-hmm. you chose to throw us away by leaving. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, it's all on. It's all on us for leaving for right. sure. For but sure. But I was like, I had gotten so. I was actually one of the cases where I didn't think I was going to hell because I had a pretty good relationship in in my mind. I had a good relationship with God, and I was like, if God is real. Um, he's not this. This is not my God. Right. Because if if this is the God that is in the afterlife, he hates women. Mm. <laughs> like plain and simple, he hates me. <laughs> what did I do? But so I believe that he, you know, had had another path for me, and that yeah. the leadership was flawed. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't get to that point. A lot of people just are like, I'm going to hell, and that's what I choose. But I choose because mm-hmm. well, and that's something I mentioned too. Someone asked me recently. They said, What if in the end you realize Warren Jeffs actually was a true prophet? And I said. <laughs> Hey, if Warren Jess is a true prophet and he's speaking for God, mm-hmm. send me to hell. Yeah. Because yeah. I, do, I do not want to be there if, yeah. that, if that is actually what it is. They, Obviously, I don't believe that. But right. that's, my, that's my answer is there's just no way mm-hmm. that, that that would be good. Well, and they would say in, this, in my group, and I'm sure they said it in yours, this is like the closest thing to heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. And I would be like, if this is heaven, what is hell like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It feels a lot like heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. yeah. So anyway, lots of great questions. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll, we'll be back with more questions and answers. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'm going to leave your guys' um, YouTube in my description box down below. So and same, follow them. As same we the will. other way. Yep, exactly. So you can find us all. So yeah. thank you for watching. Thank we'll talk you. to you soon. See you.